So, hello. <laughs> I've been talking into the ethers for two minutes and then suddenly thought, well, this is odd. I think I, I muted myself, so I'm really sorry. Um, I was saying to myself that um, welcome. Uh, we were supposed to be taking a look live through um, our half meter telescope this evening in the Canary Islands at the Alpha Star of the constellation Pisces. But very sadly, some weather came in unexpectedly and so we can't take a look live. So I've cheated and put up a couple of images um, which don't really hold a candle to the kind of image that we would have got through through the half meter and, and T2 I also set up this evening. Um, so if it's okay with you, it's okay with me. We're just going to you know, hang out for the next 10 minutes or so and talk about uh, this particular star. Um, and the reason I wanted to do this, we're going to be looking at Pisces, the constellation on Sunday in Constellation Stories and talking about you know, how Pisces has been seen throughout history by the ancients. What is it? As you can see in this image here, um, there are these two fish tied together by a cord and that knot at the bottom is Alpha Piscium. So on Sunday we're going to talk about uh, sort of the myth of Pisces and have a look at some of its um, deep objects like deep sky objects like there's several galaxies interacting galaxies uh, within Pisces and some of its other stars, um, particularly some of the brighter stars than Alpha Piscium because although this is an Alpha star and typically um, the Alphas are given that designation because they are the brightest in a constellation, uh, in this particular case that's, n that's not true, the Eta and Gamma star are brighter. Um, but this was given the Alpha designation because of its location, which is is in that knot, sort of the the bottom of the V that Pisces makes. So if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, um, this is a really great constellation to look at right now, which is why we're, we're looking at it, <laughs> why we're talking about it this week. Um, you need a dark sky. The stars in Pisces aren't particularly bright. Um, so I'm in New York and while I can see like Gemini and Auriga and uh, the Big Dipper and Orion, um, it's much harder to see Pisces, but you know, I'm in New York. Um, but it's also, um, it's pretty easy to find if you do have dark skies and you get there from the Star of Pegasus. Uh, the Star of Pegasus is obviously in the Pegasus constellation. Um, sorry, the Square of Pegasus. Um, it's an asterism and an asterism is a pattern of stars um, uh, and they typically get a name, but they're not uh, like a constellation. Um, a constellation is something sort of bigger. So, for example, the Big Dipper is an asterism within the larger constellation of Ursa Major, um, and the Square of Pegasus is an asterism within um, the constellation of Pegasus. Uh, so, let's see if I can just bring that up. Yeah. So, uh, the way you get there is you can see here in this little image I just flashed up the V of Pisces down the bottom. You can see the star we would have been looking at this evening, Alpha Piscium at the bottom. Um, and that is Pisces and that there is the square of Pegasus. And you can get there pretty easily by looking for the Big Dipper, uh, which points to Polaris. And then following that line, probably double again um, the distance and you'll end up at the square of Pegasus and then you'll sort of hopefully easily find Pisces. Um, that western fish, so you see that circle there um, of stars uh, within Pisces on the right hand side, it's called the western fish. Um, that's an asterism of its own, sometimes that's easy to find the circle underneath the square. You can also get there from Cassiopeia if you're familiar with the M or W, depending how you look at it. Uh, that's a sort of an easy constellation to pick out. So that's how you find Pisces. Um, I say it's gleaming in the s s sky right now. Um, some people uh, get confused. They think if they're a Pisces, so you've been born, I think around February, March or something, that therefore you can see your constellation in the sky at night around the time of your birth. Um, but actually, um, your astrological star sign comes from your sun sign. So the sun is in Pisces if you happen to be a Pisces, and therefore you're absolutely not seeing the constellation um, on the day of your birthday uh, because the sun's in it. Um, but you can always see your constellation about six months before obviously. So um, uh, so this star is a binary, which is what I was, what I was sort of excited to show you. Um, and as I mentioned, it's called the knot. It has a name. It's Al Resha. It comes from the old Arabic name for it, which sometimes meant the knot in the cord or the well rope it's been referred to. It was called the node of the two fishes or the two strings in Latin. Um, uh, 
And, you know, I always think it's, it has a fascinating story that we'll talk more about on um, Sunday because, you know, you can see, let me just get rid of this Pegasus so we can come back. You can see, you know, it's very different to the, the Pisces sign that we think of today, which is sort of two fish in a circle as one. And it's thought that um, we moved into the age of Pisces uh, at the time that Christianity was starting. So Christianity to sort of shake up the pagans, <laughs> kept the fish, but then created its sort of own symbol with those two fish as one. But this was the original Pisces, or the Babylonians saw it this way, and then the Greeks and the Romans. And we would think that before the Babylonians, but that's the earliest records we have. So it's a double star. Um, we think, oh goodness, anywhere between 150 to 300 light years away is what, what I've been reading um, and these two stars actually take more than 700 years to orbit one another. Uh, you can kind of see the two stars in the right of this picture. Uh, it's very hard to see. They look like one star, but there's actually two stars there. Um, and, uh, you know, they look like they're close together. It's actually the distance uh, of um, the Earth and the Sun, but, uh, or about the distance between... I'm sorry, it's 120 times the distance between the Earth and the Sun, between these two stars, phenomenally. When you go out into space, you sort of, distance becomes such a strange thing to get our minds around. Um, but yeah, that's, or another way of thinking about it is between these two stars is the distance between the Sun and Pluto. So <laughs> amazing. So they take 700 years to orbit one another, and they're actually going to make their closest approach in 2060. Um, I don't know if I'll be around then, but hopefully some of you will be. <laughs> Um, and each of these is many times uh, more luminous than the sun and about sort of average two times the solar mass. Um, so, uh, yeah, a short one, but and I'm sorry not to, um, uh, that we can't sort of bathe in the glory from our telescopes this evening. But um, as I said, on Sunday, it will be um, having a closer look again, hopefully if the weather uh, is with us we'll be looking again at this star and the Eta star and the Gamma star and then, as I mentioned some of the galaxies but we're talking more about these tales there's some really fun Greek and Roman tales about Pisces and how they came you know it's such an odd um, picture you know two fish tied by their tails by a knot um, by a rope with a knot in the middle um, and uh, but it's such a unique uh, shape that as I say it's easy to see in the sky around this time of the year if you are in the northern hemisphere so definitely get your binoculars out and go and see if you can see it um, it's a telescopic binary so if you want to see the two stars you are going to need a stronger telescope your binoculars won't um, you won't be able to see the two together um, and so I think that's about it so yeah I'm sorry, sorry again <laughs> For the uh, for the weather in the Canary Islands, what can we do? This is the trouble of being an astronomer. But um, I'm glad we got to just uh, have a quick um, chat about it. We're going to be doing more more of these. Hopefully, the weather will will uh, be on our side as we do these quick um, open to all look-ins over the next uh, well every week really, um, taking a look at a star and then following up with uh, constellation stories on Sunday. If you would like to come and be a member. Uh, and join the discussion uh, and so um, I hope it's clear skies where you are and that you can get out and take a look at Pisces even if we can't from our mega telescopes in the Canary Islands this evening but uh, wishing you clear skies and um, thanks for for tuning in <laughs> um, and have a lovely evening thanks bye <laughs>